My friend, this is it. What's up everyone, MindBlank here, welcome back to my channel and Far Cry 5 launched last week on PC and we haven't done a game performance test in some time, have we? This was an anticipated launch by the franchise's fans bringing a new setting, improved gameplay and graphics, but I actually find this title more interesting by looking at the technical perspective. This is the first non-Vulcan title that is built to take advantage of the unique hardware level features found on the RX Vega card. AMD worked closely with Ubisoft to ensure a specific rendering path for AMD cards that takes advantage of RPM, Rapid Packed Math, which is essentially 16-bit floating point compute instead of FP32 for areas where the lower quality calculation will not have a visual impact. Therefore, Rapid Packed Math has the advantage of theoretically being twice as fast as FP32. There's other stuff baked in and catering to the Vega architecture here, so I'd suggest you watch the AMD specific features trailer for more general info. It's also worth mentioning that none of this has any negative impact on Nvidia cards. With this being the only DX11 title that currently does this, I was curious to see the RX Vega 64 versus its competitor, the GTX 1080. When we got Rapid Packed Math in a game last time, Wolfenstein 2, well, it was running on Vulcan which by de facto tends to run better on recent AMD cards, but what about a DirectX title? This is an overclocked card test, so don't look for stock stuff here. I want to see if the RX Vega 64 is indeed faster than a 1080, so I had to drain these cards out of all their available performance. And I'm doing this by overclocking the 1080 to 2090 MHz core and 11400 MHz effective VRAM clock and the Vega 64 to around 1660 MHz core and 1140 MHz HBM2 clock. All tests have been performed at 3440 by 1440 ultra wide resolution so CPU bottlenecking here is almost non-existent. And I'm also running driver version 391.35 on the GeForce and 18.3.4 on the Radeon. And yes, Vega is indeed faster by anywhere between 7-13% to depending on area. I don't have a 1080 Ti to test against, but the overclocked Vega 64 is very close to a stock 1080 Ti, running around 1900MHz core clock, which is what most AIB cards run at stock. Clearly at let's say 2100 MHz a 1080 Ti will still be faster, but the gap between the two is very narrow, especially when comparing to overclocked liquid cooled edition Vegas which can consistently do 1700 plus MHz core clock unlike my water blocked Air Vega 64. But does this matter in the end? It does and doesn't at the same time. It does because right now there's a few very popular AAA titles that will run consistently better on Vega cards. And I personally quite enjoy some of those titles and play regularly. Doom, Wolfenstein 2, Battlefield 1 can also somewhat be included here and now Far Cry 5. And of course some other games too but you get the idea. However, at the same time, it doesn't matter, the 1080 Ti is still out of reach in most titles, which is not a surprise really since the Vega 64 is not a 1080 Ti competitor, but what's interesting here is that there's indeed a lot of horsepower under the Vega hood, which is not going to get tapped unless developers will specifically target it, and herein lies the actual problem. I've also ran the built-in benchmark and here's a side-by-side -side view of how frame rates stack. Keep in mind that recording is done with Shadowplay and Relive respectively and this eats around 1 FPS out of the averages, but it's a solid test nonetheless. I found the benchmark to give a pretty accurate image of how the game will actually run, going through dense forests and orchards nets me around the same averages as the built-in benchmark says, so it seems to be on point. Dips generally occur during heavy firefights and big explosions, which are quite common in Far Cry 5 and this is where at this resolution the Vega felt more comfortable with almost no dips below 60 FPS as opposed to low or mid 50s on the 1080. I will be showing you the benchmark and screen results which represent true averages without recording. This difference of 8 FPS on the averages is around 11% or so and for comparison's sake a 1080 Ti clocked at around 1900MHz will score around 78-79 FPS here.
The positive news here is that all this goodness does trickle down to the little Vega brothers, opening the possibility to run Far Cry 5 on Ryzen APUs with pretty nice visuals and performance. Over here I'm testing the Vega 11 found in the 2400G which I've clocked to 1550MHz, paired with 3200MHz CL16 RAM and the CPU is clocked to 3.9GHz as well. I chose 900p which is a minor reduction in visual fidelity and a good trade-off for the extra FPS. Performance is really amazing considering the level of this integrated APU and don't think that the Vega 8 found in the 2200G will be much behind if at all. These iGPUs are heavily bandwidth limited to a point that the extra CUs found on Vega 11 cease to have an impact if you're running around 1500 plus MHz on the GPU. There's currently no relive live available for the Ryzen APU family and I wouldn't have enabled it anyway since it would eat away too much of the frame rate enough to present a skewed idea on the actual frame rate we're getting in game. But I don't think many budget builders and 2200G owners were expecting to run Far Cry 5 at this resolution and settings while getting above 30 FPS consistently. I think I've mentioned how impressed I am with these two CPUs and their respective reviews, so it's great that it gets even better than how I already view them. Honestly, playing this game on the living room TV, six feet away, I'm very much enjoying the experience without actually feeling that I'm giving up much on the visual side of things. I would just recommend capping at 30 FPS and turning stuff up after you've settled on the resolution you're going to play at. So, alright guys, it's been fun testing this game, especially replaying the 30 minute intro which is very well done. Let me know how you're running the game, I'd love to hear how it's doing on laptops for example. Don't forget to check out my Twitter, Instagram and Patreon pages linked in the description if you want to become a mind blank tech backer. And thank you for supporting this channel by subscribing, I'll see you in the next one everybody, bye bye.